You're Near the Wild with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska. Hello. Hey, Matt Becker. Hello there. Let's see what's going on with John. It says John was unable to join this call. They may need yeah. to. What's up? Mine was acting all screwy, too. My computer's fucking taking forever. Or they're using an unsupported device. Is John building his own computers? I, d- I don't know that he has that kind of... He barely made beer. <laughs> That's true. Let me see if I can add him. Oh, here we go. Test in the technology here. Add to the call. Skype John Norris. Oh, I might be able to just call his phone. Hmm. One of the options is to remove him from the group. If this is a continuing problem, we might have to consider that option, removing him from the group. Yeah, something's up, man. It won't let him go in. That is weird. Let's get his phone. All right, John, you're on secret probation, double secret probation. Yeah. You think it has anything to do with Trump? Trump's America? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> he does work for... for uh public media didn't they just buy skype i don't know i I read a fake news story where they closed (laughs) oh come on john where is he one more do you hear a buzzing noise becker yeah yeah a little bit all right do you still hear it yeah now i don't no yeah like I, i it's running really slow though. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Not, but my, I mean, just my computer. I like went to fire it up from dark, and it just took forever. And I'm like, going, come on, for God's <laughs> sakes. Let's see here. One more try, John. Oh, it, it doesn't even show him as online yet. He might not be ready. Mm. Let me double check. So yeah, the last time uh, the a podcast went out was it you and John. On the 14th of October. Mm-hmm. That was the uh, Delicious Baby Turkeys podcast. <laughs> yes, it was. And uh, we have two more. Oh, yeah? You guys been uh, stockpiling them? Yeah, we're stockpiling now. now we're you gonna... you got to send them to me. Yeah, I put one in there, but then you were in the midst of busy, <laughs> so I knew. Yeah, things have been a little crazy. Yeah, so, again... The world stands still, even if you don't. Yeah. Boy, you ain't kidding. I'm not seeing John in here. Maybe we should just reschedule for later this afternoon. Okay. But John said at uh, 2.30 your time, which is 4.30 our time, um, he said he had to be back at work. Okay. But I don't don't even see him. He's not even online. Let me check one more time on my text, see if he said something. He was using his PS2. (laughs) He takes his he takes his uh, his game station to work and goes. This is work related. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's not even online. I mean, he's not even responding to texts. Okay. So why don't you? Uh, are you, do you are you able to text? I don't know what you do with technology these these days. Yeah, I can. I I can. Oh wait, my whole screen just went out. What did that do? Everything just uh, disappeared off my screen. Are you on your yes. iPad? No, I'm on the computer in my okay. room. And all the icons are gone now. What? I don't know what's going on. All right. Something's going on. So uh, arrange you with... You still sound great. Thank you. Uh, arrange with uh, John anytime after 4.30 today. Okay. And then uh, we can... Because uh, I'm all set up and ready to go, so I can do anything tonight. All right? All right. Yeah, I'll go on Facebook. Hello? Oh, hello. Hello. Look at that. Hello. Where are you calling from, John? Uh, uh, I'm at. I'm in my, in my home. Oh, are you? Place I call home. Is this your? Uh, are you? Are you calling Skype through your phone, or is this through a a device? This is through my computer. I just uh switched to the other microphone. Is it working? Yeah, that's yeah. It's everything good. sounds good. All right. Uh, but okay. yeah, because it said you had an illegal device, and we didn't know what that was. <laughs> Were you so, trying to hook up a banana to this to record through? I, I, I built a computer out of a coconut. Yeah. Well, I'm wrong. He can I build things. <laughs> I watched. I'm, he, I'm getting very handy. I fixed a water heater this weekend. He, he's, a, he's the professor on Gilligan's Island. I made exactly. a coconut phone. I can't figure out how to make a sailboat, but we have uh, coconut telecommunications on the island. 
I don't I don't know why somebody hasn't created a YouTube channel that is just like in the character of the professor, just a DIY show making things out of coconuts all day. Like like Bill Nye, but everything just coconuts. <laughs> yeah. You mean you mean like me sitting in the jungle for two months? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's there's I this, have access to this. There's this YouTube channel. I think it's called like Primitive Technology. Like that's the name of the YouTube channel, and it's just a guy. He never talks. He's just hanging out in just a pair of shorts and he's like making spears and, you know, uh, a thatch roof hut. I, it's I, kinda, it's, I know that. It's I've seen that one where he builds like a like he builds a chimney on the back of his little hut. Like yeah. he, he just like he just all of a sudden he starts. I, I think we need a chimney back there. But he doesn't say it. He just he just thinks no, it. He just you're just like watching him. Like, hmm. but I, I, where is he? But he's not he's not in Papua New Guinea. He's like, no, he's, he's like in like Knoxville in, out in someone's backyard or something. It definitely looks like somewhere that has ticks. So I wish he would like wear some long pants. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, has, he has to make them first. <laughs> oh, but he actually, he must be, well, he just made like a shrimp basket thing. So where do they have fucking shrimp in well, a river? Probably crawdad. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think Forget it is. It's crawdads. called primitive technologies, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've seen that one. I've spent uh, many hours uh, wasting away on that one. It's great because I see him like making things. <laughs> He's just sitting there like weaving rope out of like bark. And I'm like, yeah, and I'd be, I'd but be he, dead already. But he like makes. I wonder bus. how long you got to live out there before you start doing that, though. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know. You had all the monarchy. I got a headlamp. I got sticks, waterproof matches. And then you're going, OK, I'm out of all that stuff. I'd spend at least three days just walking around looking for a road. Or, he, or exhausting all it? options before having to make a shrimp basket? Yeah, it toilet? probably wouldn't occur to me to make a shrimp basket. Yeah, but did he build a toilet? Because, I mean, quite frankly, <laughs> cholera would be your, your biggest fear. <laughs> that would be well, one of you, them. <laughs> when you live in nature, the world is your toilet. Yeah, who's your health care? <laughs> Obamacare. Obamacare works in the woods. Yeah. Greg Shaley. Hey. I know, Greg. Yep. We've missed you. The Butcher of Black Knob, creator, executive. Yeah, that was crazy. Legal lawsuits. We, we, last time I talked to you. Like, go it feels like it's been like six Halloween since we've seen you. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot going on. Last we talked, we were, we were just heading out on tour. And that was uh, at the end of September and the first 20 days of October. And, uh, after that, we had a we came home and then there was a Doug drove for like seventeen hours to get home in one day from uh, Oklahoma, from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Bisbee in uh, one drive. Yeah, it was crazy. And then we had the festival at the at Bisbee two days later, and then uh, then we had Halloween a couple days after that. Butcher a black knob. I still I think I have video that I'm going to post. This will this will this will be a good. This will force me to put the video up, but uh, and then uh, the pictures look cool. Yeah, it was fun. We had yeah we had uh, we have over a hundred kids this year, and uh, wow. I don't know, how, Becca. I know you're in an area that has lots of kids. Mm-hmm. It was a little lighter than normal. Yeah, but uh, last year was really quiet. But yeah. this year was about half. So I thought with the recession and everything going on, but. Uh, yeah, it was cold out too, though. So I think I think parents are <laughs> slightly worried about our high levels of homicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, they, we're a little worried. To open the door with people with masks on. So yeah. it's, usually, it's a good precursor to being robbed. Yeah. What happened? Like, he's a six foot tall kid with a ski mask. Yeah, that, that it, especially yeah, and your your guys is uh, yeah, crime spree cl- uh, climate right now, cold or not. You know, that ski mask is probably more than likely hiding the identity of a serial killer. Yeah. Would you see? Okay, so, Greg, to catch up on our crime, amazing crimes. We've had hostages and uh, amazing like, crimes. Like no, amazing. The- I mean, these. <laughs> so here's the deal. These people, it's obviously over drug deals. And they go there and they I mean, kidnap these, them. These and are the they type go of to crimes kill them they or make- they, hold, they hold them. How about the one where the kids... <laughs> Get the girl, lures him downtown. They pick up the kid. She goes to meet the kid. Goes to meet the girl. It's a setup. The guys grab him, handcuff him, beat him up a little bit, take him to his ATM, get money, go and ransack his parents' house in Eagle River. 
but they, they all know each other. So the police arrest them at their residence with the, the items. Jeez. Then they find $100,000 worth of other stolen shit at the house. These are the Either. crimes we're having. And it's just not. So the other day, the police are downtown. They get ambushed. They go to pull a guy over. He gets out, shoots the cop three times. He returns fire. Other cops show up. They shoot the guy, kill him. Now they connected the gun to five other homicides in town. Now, if they can connect that guy to all the rape kits in town, all the problems are solved. And what, are, these, what episode of Law like and Order Net, was that? These are like, yeah, I was going to say these are Netflix original series level <laughs> level crime sprees. It's pretty mm -hmm. great. Uh, but that, I can't believe it's the only cop I've ever heard about working get shot. That's horrible. <laughs> they don't leave that's, the precinct. That's why they don't work, man. If my work was like, John, we need you to go. We need you to go cover this press conference. There's a very likely chance you will be shot. I would. I'd probably not do much either. I, I got to do a podcast. I don't have time to head downtown. <laughs> they said they're going to upgrade our 911 system. I go, oh, that would go straight to voicemail. <laughs> right now they have to pick it up and transfer it. I just want to be able to text message. So the dude, the dude that was in the, uh, the uh, shootout, they, they've linked his gun to like five other crimes, murders. Yeah. That's what I said. It's like, they're going to go see you're solved. We're done. Yeah. We're all going on vacation. One big swoop. That well, isn't that what they isn't that what they did with the uh, that Israel Keys serial killer we had a couple years ago? Oh yeah, they threw everybody in his hopper. It's like every <laughs> it's like he had he had like murders in states he'd never been to. No, I know. Yeah, and they, that's what they said. They go, well, he might have went to this state and drove there in an unmarked car. So I don't, yeah, I mean, so, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's true. It just seems suspicious when they're like, uh, yeah, and also. Uh, a couple in upstate New York, and uh, uh, and then in Oregon, and then and then Arkansas. Like, man, this guy gets around. <laughs> well, there was a big, huge guy, and I'll just say this: I play poker with him. But he, after that came out, he goes, "You know that he's not a big storyteller." So when he's brought <laughs> it up, you figured it's pretty accurate. But he goes, "That guy did remodel my bathroom. I hired him to remodel my bathroom." He goes, "He did a really good job. He just didn't. He didn't talk a lot and shit. He, he just was... went in, did the work, and I paid him. He got out." And I went. You know, you ever wonder? And they go, well, you're lucky you didn't get killed. I go, you weigh like 400 pounds. You think he wanted, he was a little kid. You think he's going to drag your happy ass out in the woods? Yeah, where are you going to put that? Nah, that's why he didn't kill you, because you're overweight. <laughs> I mean, but you would think a serial killer would do a great job remodeling, because, you know, he crosses all his uh, T's, dots his eyes. He washes everything with bleach over Doesn't, and over. Yeah, yeah. No fingerprints. Spotless. Definitely no fingerprints in that bathroom. Although you got to wonder what might be in the walls. Yeah, that, that would be the one I'd want to dig in there and go, oh, it's a charm bracelet that says never forget. Is that a nose okay. poking through? <laughs> oh, if you find a murder weapon. That's... I see eyelashes in the nose. That's weird. Put, put that on eBay. You just paid for your bathroom remodel. <laughs> <laughs> but, John, did you – for going back to Halloween, uh, what what happened with uh, with your setup? You were going to do a, a tiki theme, I think. Hula. Yeah, and you were and you were actually well, going to serve drinks at your front door. I wonder how that turned out. Well, we've moved the tiki theme to Christmas because, uh, you know, I'm lazy. I <laughs> I know you did like a whole like you created a whole whole thing in like just a few days because you just got off tour. But I'm I'm very lazy, yeah. so I didn't do anything. I gave I gave out candy. Uh, we were doing the the my girlfriend's burlesque show. Those the two Halloween weekends. And oh, so that's right. I threw right. myself into that. <laughs> He hit his wall on that. Yeah. <laughs> I learned how to tie a bow tie so I could be in the show. Oh, that's interesting. I just bought a bow tie, uh, like a tie bow tie, not like not like a yeah. clip on. And I've it's got no I have no idea how to do it. And it's you not like watch, it's watch not like, it's the not Alton Brown, the Alton Brown YouTube video of how to tie a bow tie. Oh, yeah. Was the most helpful for me. It's not like you can like loosen it a little and, and then slip it off like you do when your dad ties your first tie for you and then you have a tie until you turn 27. But it's all or nothing. With yeah, the every time it's it's all it, you start over from scratch. So Alton Brown has a link on how to tie a bow tie. Yeah, is he is he moving over into the haberdashery game from uh, from I, Food Network? I, I think so. Well, I I will put that I will put a link up for that Alton Brown. He, Great mac and cheese yeah. and bow ties. <laughs> That's a good one, though. You could do that for like a game show thing where you go, all right, and for a million dollars, uh, tie a bow tie. And they're like, I, I, I can't look it up. And they go, no. No. 
and they just stand there flipping it. I, I honestly don't know how anybody fixed anything before YouTube. <laughs> like like uh, how it, anything got really accomplished unless you went to school or a tech school or did something. Did you use it for the water heater, John? Yeah, of course I use it for the water heater. I swear Wait, to God, like before YouTube. Hold, hold on. What, what, hap- what happened with the water heater? Uh, Well, our pilot light went out and it went light. So I had to replace the thermocouple. Yep. And uh, and clean off some things and uh, reinstall everything. And we have we have a really weird water heater where you have to like unscrew a door and take it's not things aren't available. It was pretty easy. It was pretty easy, but I wouldn't have even known what where to start if yeah. I didn't have YouTube. So I just imagine a world before YouTube where everybody only knows how to do one thing. No, that's what kept people like plumbers could rape you because they go, well, you don't know what you're doing and I do. And now they got that flexi tube. Mm-hmm. That you can just shove it in both ends and you don't have to sweat pipe or put copper all through the house. And you're going, yeah, I'll just do that. And the guy goes, well, that, that's not quite as good as what? Copper? Really? I'm sorry, Bisbee, <laughs> but copper's not making a comeback anytime soon. That's actually the way that they run um, Waterline in Mexico. Like, I I mean, no surprise. They they all don't you have copper pipes. Uh, but when I was down there a long time ago, this is 30 years ago. Uh, we were we at a friend's house and they were doing some construction. They were, I mean, these guys, they had some money cause they all, all the family worked up in, in uh, the U S we went down to their farm and then they took us, you know, well, Hey, we're building an apartment here. And we went there and like, everything was like cement walls. And then they just have a, a trough in the wall that they lay the flexible plastic tubing. And that goes right down to the water source. And then they just putty up that trough. And it goes right, you know, and it made sense to me. I mean, it, it's well, what, di- what didn't make sense to you is where they got the money, and it came from the U.S. and that's for Mexicans <laughs> breaking the houses and stealing the copper pipes. <laughs> so actually, they do depend on copper. Turns out, yes, they do. <laughs> that's how they pay their bills in Mexico. Mm. So, mm. so yeah, the the uh, YouTube. I I forget to to uh, consult the uh, Oracle of YouTube every once in a while. I'm getting better at it rather than oh, dude. Everything, everything's yeah. on there. I mean, you got, it's crazy. When it comes to cooking, though, sometimes it's fucking bullshit. Yeah. But I mean, when it comes down, I mean, pilot light and cleaning off the thermocoupler seems pretty straightforward. You did, yeah. It. yeah. It's, it's yeah, great somebody to me. come in and do that. That is crazy. It's great to me that there's all these like, like handy fifty-eight year old former like general contractors who have these YouTube channels. Yeah. <laughs> Well, John, the oh. best is the automotive. The automotive is great because yeah. these guys will cut through all the bullshit. Like, they're going to give you this paper or O-ring to put in your <laughs> gasket thing. Throw that away. Get some fucking goddamn seal. Put some silicone seal around. Those things, he goes, why waste your time? This guy's been doing it 20 years. I go, thank you. Yeah, that's what he does. Mm-hmm. He does them all day long. And then I hate it when they bring their kid in then. Oh, and this is my kid, Andrew, and he's going to fucking get in the way of every fucking thing you're trying to watch. I go, I'm sorry you didn't know how to work a condom, but you know how to rebuild a carburetor. <laughs> and and so uh, my girlfriend's dad is like, he just fixes things. Like, he just has that. He's just one of the people born with the ability to like just fix elections? things. Like elections? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, when I do... When I fix shit on my car, I can have him come look at it and be like, what do you think? Because <laughs> it's going to blow up. And uh, you're usually right. So it's nice to have a backup, even with even with YouTube, because I don't I don't trust everybody on there. Yeah. When it comes to like uh, like gas appliances and the pilot light, everyone's pretty freaked out on getting involved. And I usually just call Shawnee from I mean, in Bisbee, there's there's a few people that work on stuff. But when it comes to like. Like like turning on the heat and stuff like that for the for the season. Yeah, Shawnee's my go-to, but uh, yeah, everything else pretty much uh, YouTube it. Yeah, because when he when he works with gas stuff, everybody's like, make sure you don't smell gas. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. My nose is clogged up all the time. I don't know if I'm smelling gas. Light a lighter, that'll tell you right off. <laughs> right off, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's how I that's how I learned how to make those uh, milk jug uh, skulls. Those, those worked out pretty good on uh, YouTube. <laughs> I mean, there's tons of Halloween stuff on YouTube. I mean, it's and that's another thing where like you, you don't want to you really wait till the end <laughs> or skip to the end <laughs> to see the final product before you you, you jump yeah. in. Yeah, it's one well, of you those know things. the funny one. 
so when we get the house in Bisbee, right? So we were down there with you guys and thing, and we left. And then I was busy trying to get the utilities on and like the water. I have to send them a blood type and all kinds of things <laughs> to get the water turned. We, I go, we we're just fucking there. They sent it to the wrong email. I don't even know how they got that email. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I didn't do that. We were there, but now we can't do it. Anyway, so I was like, whatever. But then the gas. They go, do you want to turn it on? I go, yeah. Because we set that up while we were there. And we're like, yeah. And they came out, inspected. Sure, good. You're good. And then I went, honey, did you leave the stove or anything on when the gas was on? We turned everything on in the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, we really shouldn't turn it on until we know everything's off. So we got that taken care of. But it was just very funny, the idea we could be up here turning the gas on, blowing up the neighborhood. Yeah, that, yeah, a total uh, lethal weapon ending. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, turn it on at 4 o'clock on Thursday. I hate that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Uh, we got someone. I don't know who it was. Someone. Someone did clear out your yard. That okay. was like all weeded up. And then we 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 figured we probably should have put something out for trick or treaters on that street. But then we realized there's, there's no one on that street. We're we're like the only game in town on that street, and you guys are on the other side. So so yeah. you didn't get egged. You're fine. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Please see uh, whatever two. 211 black knob <laughs> have a have a forwarding sign i think you're i think you're one you're in the 100s yeah we are yeah. it's actually exactly reversed and when i saw your flyer i was laughing going are they fucking using our house for the hot on <laughs> see that's the thing goes, they wouldn't do that I go that'd be hysterical we could have had a whole walk through haunted house at your place didn't even think about it till it was too late and we only had two days of setup anyway so yeah, you did an amazing job. That was fucking fantastic. Thanks. I know you're a perfectionist, so you would have like two more days. You're like Schindler's List with Halloween. Well, like the I, I we could have saved five more kids. I had all these. Uh, I had a, I bought some new uh, electronics for Chad, so that when he comes out, the, you know, this, this it's a it's a trigger that sets off audio and uh, electrical to to make lights go and shit like that. And it's got a it's got a audio that like it's right in there on a th- a little uh sd card i didn't fucking program any of that until like five o'clock and kids were coming at six six fifteen so it was really down it was down to the wire but yeah it, it all worked out and then next year i think we're, we're already talking about doing an actual walkthrough in the in the yard next door where there's nothing but those trailers yeah yeah so yeah bigger and better yeah. We certainly well, won't well, tour well, up to up to two days before. That's for sure. Because hmm. I Doug yeah, next year be on a Tuesday. So. Doug Doug came down this year, which he, he usually scoffs at all that stuff. But but they they ended up part. They were they were just going to come down and have a cocktail and see what happened. And they ended up grabbing the cooler, sat in the sat in the suburban and parked and just sat for two and a half hours and watched the kids get scared. <laughs> it's like an observation deck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Greg, have you have you considered just having your own like, like haunted house? Because you seem to be like I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're you're the expert I go to when it comes to uh, haunted houses and Halloween type attractions. It would seem like that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? I don't know. It doesn't seem like people make a lot of money doing no. it. But. No, I mean, you can, you can, but, uh, I mean, it takes a lot of money. It's a lot of work. And we, we actually ran one, my brother and I, and, uh, Tracy and, and Amy, we, uh, we did two years. We had the Seattle house of horrors in, uh, Kirkland hmm. and, uh, lost a lot of money. Well, I didn't, my brother did, but yeah. yeah. It, it, and also, size, it, let me guess full size candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we did all right on ticket sales. We lost it on the full size candy bars. Uh, yeah, we you would. You would. Do you get a deal on chainsaws without the chain on them, or you still have to pay full price? I fucking hate chainsaws, dude. Those are, that's like, like the weakest ending. It, it, it's been. That's not the way to do Weed it. Weed whackers. <laughs> yeah, now you come at them with a hedge trimmer. <laughs> 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 there was one. It was a. It was a haunt that was in Orlando. And this was, uh, man, this was back when I was still in a band and, and I'd travel to go see, to go see music in Florida from Alaska. And, uh, there was a place called Terror on Church Street. And it was a, it was a fucking kick ass. It was a haunted house that came over from Europe. It was a franchise in Europe and they, and they had one in Orlando and it was, it was fucking good, man. And they didn't have a chainsaw at the end. They had this fucking guy who chased you 
through like all these bodies hanging from bags. And then there was another guy dressed just like him that like stepped out right at the end. And right then there was a flash. And then you, and then he comes at you and you dump out of this haunted house into the gift shop. <laughs> and, and then there's that picture. That flash was them taking your picture as this guy scares the shit out of you. It was really good. Terror on Church Street. Not to mention all the full frontal nudity since it was a European haunted oh, house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Just, no it was topless. The only topless haunted house. <laughs> Offend, offending your Puritan sensibilities. <laughs> We're a European haunted house. Everyone had Speedos. <laughs> Bert Kreischer pops out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I saw up here, I didn't get to go to it, but somebody was doing um, like a zombie hunt thing up here yeah and it's the first year i've seen them advertise it so i was this where you go imagine it's just was it on a car talked about them you talked about those before the way they do them in uh arizona or somewhere yeah they're all over the country now it's it's kind of like a hayride type thing there's yeah where you have a you have a fixed gun and they use smaller caliber uh uh paint paint balls and it's it's either props that pop up and then you you shoot at it, or uh, the other the other one is where they have actual dudes and like just all. It looks like they're almost wearing one of those suits that like a, a dog can attack you. <laughs> like it looks like you have carpet wrapped around your whole body. Right. Well, they wear that and then they have like a zombie mask on, and then those guys come at you. But like I said, they're smaller caliber and. Uh, oh no! It's it's a zombie bomb squad. <laughs> yeah, zombie bomb squad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I I haven't been on one of those. I've done one where like they've they have a guy like a geek show where the guy will the, the zombie will be at the end of like a a carnival booth and the zombie will kind of go back and forth and you just take pot shots at him. I've done that. That's kind of fun. I don't know how you'd get someone to show up for the second night of that job. Uh, I mean, in the well, the Alaska version I assume is just driving around and shooting homeless people with paintball. <laughs> that's that's kind of the Alaskan version we've had for a long time and they just put a new marketing spin on it for Halloween. Yeah, that's good. I mean, just but well, I've got the new idea for mine is uh, those uh I just got a set of those virtual reality that, you know, it's basically a box. You stick on your head, then you stick uh Oh, you a Samsung you, phone in there? Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, just a, and, just a cardboard box. Yeah, they just have yeah. a yeah. This it, is a plastic box I got on sale. <laughs> it came in a cardboard box, which I thought was ironic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I put it on, and I think, and we were watching a fish swimming in the ocean, and it it actually is pretty cool. But I think that's the future haunted houses. You could just make a runway, and they walk it. And they have to keep the headset on, and then you could have all the special effects in their head, and then you just keep tripping them. Stick a cane out. Boom. Gotcha. <laughs> I, uh, I did one of those uh, those VR goggle things. Uh, it said with the, at the Bratchels, they had one that. Uh, it, oh, for free? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was a uh, it was, it's like a Samsung phone that goes in there, kind of goes in sideways. And the uh, the holder is basically just wrapping around your head. And then there's uh, a way to control it. There's like a like a push button joystick on the side on, on one of the temples. And it is one of those things where you're like, ah, how good could it be? And then you're like immersed. Everywhere you yeah. look, you're like looking around. And then all of a sudden there's a fucking T-Rex with his mouth open at you. And you could, you could swear you could feel its breath, you know. It was, it was pretty good. I, I could not take the uh, roller coaster one. No, little, yeah, yeah, that was the one where they just tried to get you to get Yeah, they go to – yeah, it's, 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 like a, it's like going mm-hmm. to the nth degree like in a 3D – in the 3D movie where there, everything comes pointing at you, the roller coaster is what is is that version where it's like it's so over the top, you know, you're going to vomit. I mean, but Greg, like, is it really that good or has marijuana just been legalized in a lot of states? No, dude, I listen, I question. I had to take it off during the roller coaster one. And that's fine. I, I don't I don't like spinny stuff anyway. But but even like the the one where you're going through the universe. And then it, as you you pull back from the earth and you just keep going out there and out there, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, I mm. I but for me I saw it as a, I think like watching movies on a plane. Yeah, like just the idea put those on and nobody will bother you. Or the idea of, of walk. I mean, yeah, you could put that on your face, uh, and you could be anywhere while you know the the dentist is pulling your teeth. I I could totally see where it would work. 
I mean, you really get lost in it, John. You've got to, you've got to check out this technology. You, you've got to move I from mean, coconuts to fucking three D virtual reality. Have I have one already. <laughs> I just haven't used it. I think Tucker really? Campbell gave it to me for Christmas a couple of Christmases ago. A coconut VR no, goggles. <laughs> yeah, no, it's hanging out. I mean, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the technology to get really good, guys. All right. I don't want to jump in too soon. But I, I think it would be good to do one as a haunted house. Yeah, that I just think be cool. it'd be simple because then you just need the walkway and they keep it on and it's timed with the walkway. Yeah, yeah. So like an incline, you go up a hill, you actually are walking up a ramp and then. There is a company a doing that, though, right now. They, 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 this is the thing where they like in five years, we'll have franchises all over. They're building a place that the like everything is kind of set up. And if you took the goggles off, everything would just be, you know. Rough, rough, uh, rough cut wood and uh, two by fours. I'm just using miniature golf courses. <laughs> you could do You're that. Set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, there's just there's no limit to what you could do on that. But these guys are doing it in a warehouse to where when you go up the stairs, you are walking up the stairs, but it's just rough stairs, all colored, painted flat black. But in your head, you're in like Victorian England or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. It Jack the Ripper's it following seems harder. You. It seems harder to create a virtual reality haunted house than to just create a real haunted Built, house. Yeah, <laughs> get Built a bunch up. of get a get a bunch of like you know black trash bags and cobwebs and teenagers. Well, that's what I originally had a cartoon <laughs> thing I worked on early was about a kid who lived in this big you know ritzy house and the thing and the butler brings him you know whatever and. The little kid's just like, he looks like a spoiled little rich little kid. And, and all of a sudden it starts fritzing. And when it starts fritzing, it goes back to, he takes these goggles off and he lives in a dump and he's in like Harlem. <laughs> he's like, oh shit. And there's rats running around. The dog isn't really a dog. It's a rat. <laughs> and so really that's the real world. And, and the theme of it was, and this is ahead of its time, was uh, battery lives matter. Because if your batteries go dead, you have to live in your own world. But... <laughs> So I think our future will be really incredible as long as you can afford the Wi-Fi. Yes, or the or the power hookup, definitely. We we live in such a magical time. <laughs> hey. Oh shit. Hey, Beck, are you there? Yeah. I'm recording this on Doug's uh, recording mechanism, and I'm not okay. splitting our signal between the two. <laughs> I usually I usually pan you guys left and my signal right, so I can mm. edit it uh, easier. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. You needed, you needed a challenge. Well, yeah. Now it's just gonna seem muddy <laughs> with us talking over each other. Usually, I can silence one of us from uh, not understanding the other was already halfway through a sentence. Oh, that's Greg, a- we've set a pretty, we've set a really high bar for audio <laughs> quality for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> speaking, I of, still think it's amazing. Speaking of audio, you guys see that clip that I just sent you? That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in a while, and that's that's really, really cool, Greg. That's the coolest thing ever. That's fucking scary. If you don't believe me, I can make John say that. <laughs> <laughs> John, I don't know if you saw it because you were uh, a little late to the party. I didn't. Uh, I didn't watch that whole video, but I've read about it. But it, it, and it is. It's, it's cool basically. It, John. It's a link I got that a red band posted, and it was from the uh, Photoshop. Uh, it was actually uh, Adobe's um, what their big 2016 Max or whatever their their con- convention or State of the Union or whatever, and they uh, they had a, a thing called Project Voco. And it basically does to audio what Photoshop does to photos. And the, the, the demonstration, Becker, you saw it. It's fucking, it's like, what yeah. the fuck? I, I, I have to admit, they did to audio what they did to my, when I bought all their programs and then put it <laughs> online and then told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> I thought they did that. They made me agree to something I never said. Yeah, now they but, now they have okay. proof that you said yes. <laughs> they I can't just, wait till your technology is stolen and sold to me for ninety nine cents. Yeah, the uh, John, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, but in the the video, the de- the demonstration, it's like seven minutes long. It's not very long, but basically, you can take a clip of someone's voice 
and then it's sampled, and then you can not only switch things around, which is basically what you do with any with any DAW uh, software, like like how we edit this this podcast. But then you can actually type in a word that they didn't say in that phrase, and it will have them say that word. And you can cut and paste it and put it anywhere in the sentence. Yeah, I've been reading about it. It's incredible. And no, it's, it's but but the thing is, they have an Asian guy do it, and he can barely speak clearly. <laughs> and I thought that was weird for a voice guy. <laughs> But I he I I think he's like some rock star in the uh in the uh in the Adobe world. I mean they, that, they he's yeah. like I'm yeah, sure he did like a that, bad joke and everybody laughed. So I think <laughs> yeah. He's like that dude. He's like that dude we met in Vegas who was just like throwing throwing around like ten thousand dollars on the uh, roulette table who like said he sold his company for like billions of dollars. I'm oh, sure the- this guy is this he's just some genius and he's created like the next big thing. It's gonna it's gonna completely change everything and now we can't trust what anybody says ever yeah but it's gonna make my my job a lot easier it's gonna make those fucking greeting cards fucking cool <laughs> when you record the voice recording ones yeah i the pope says happy birthday john norris it's like wow it does sound like the pope and it is it's a pope's voice i don't know what the pope sounds like so you will you will you could do that now on your birthday <laughs> it's only good if it's if, it's, if it's authentic john Becker would not send you a fake Pope greeting. Come on. It's a completely real Pope greeting card. <laughs> but but also, guys, that was a demo at an Adobe event. So was that even real? Probably not. We oh, can't you, trust Adobe. You think they – well, that Becker's already established that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You I think, mean – You think they cheesed it, huh? I think it's – I, I think they <laughs> – I think it's fake, and they're just saying this is what the future is going to be like. So, I guess you could take any. Well, I mean, this is this is. I always thought it would be cool if, like, like the uh, the GPS in the cars. You can uh, you can like pick like a, a female voice or a female British voice. But I always thought it'd be better if, like, uh, you know, Sean Connery did it. Yeah. Now you don't even need so Sean Connery. My, Con- my you- neighbor Carl. Yeah, your neighbor Carl. But now you don't. Hey. You just he just needs to say that the uh, the 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 quick fox jumped over the fucking <laughs> the hedge, and then you you got everything you need for him to be voicing your GPS, or nice. or doing a ransom <laughs> voicemail. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, threatening to kill a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it though. The disclaimer at the very end. We even put in technology. That's going to make it harder if it's faked to tell. I go, you're going to make it better but worse? I don't know what you mean. I think like that's their back door. That not real. That's their back I, yeah, door. Their back door is, the, Trump never said grab my pussy is what he's trying to say. <laughs> oh, he, <laughs> now, said, now that's the least offensive thing he's going to say. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be plenty more. You, you can scrub any of those videos now. Put whatever you want in there. You know what? America spoke. He clearly is the most popular guy ever in America. <laughs> He's he is the most popular. He's he lo, lo, well, Hillary has the uh, most popular votes ever and still lost the election by eight hundred thousand votes so far. I think it's I think it's over a million now. I just read it as no. over a million. No, but the thing is, there's at least a million illegals that had fake IDs that voted, <laughs> so they immediately don't count. Oh, Becker, they're they're not illegal. They're dead people who are voting, not illegal people. Well, they'll be dead uh, if they don't go back home. Illegals, you know, they're busy selling drugs and raping and murdering. They don't is have time that, to vote. Is, is this – we've really gotten into the part where you – I know you guys don't like talking about politics, but I think the world will talk about it now. It's not that, it's not that we don't like it. We just don't know anything about it. So. Well, you're about to. Well, clearly now in in the uh, Trump era, you don't have to know anything about anything, and you can still be an expert. <laughs> I mean, that's my read. No. He just no. this is what happened. We, uh, you're right. I don't like talking about politics on this, but honestly, he just he did what he had to do. He said anything he wanted to say to win the to win, and now he'll do whatever he wants later. And He's already he there. You can't too. you can't kick him out. Well, well they can impeach when him. WikiLeaks released the thing saying I have. One version of speech for the people and one for Wall Street. She was saying that at her thousand dollar plate dinners. Yeah. And everybody went, maybe you're really not in touch with me like I hoped. That <laughs> wasn't a thousand plate dinner. That was at where they like that was at her thing where they paid her two hundred fifty thousand dollars to give a speech. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She didn't she didn't even provide dinner. <laughs> that was extra. <laughs> I just got the uh, cheese plate. I'm looking at at uh, time 
dot com, formerly known as Time Magazine, mm -hmm. and Hillary <laughs> Hillary Clinton's popular vote lead expands to over one million votes. Yeah, according to Time, but they're a liberal paper. Job. They're they're the media. I get it. They don't even have a menu, million subscribers anymore. What are you talking about? <laughs> Time dot com probably does, but I don't, I don't know about Time Magazine. Not once they got rid of the centerfold. <laughs> And those, sure and those racy cartoons it, on the back page <laughs> where they fold it, you know, the, the bifold, and then it makes a new, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, might oh be... I looked up Crack Magazine. It's really <laughs> funny. Crack Magazine. Yeah, it's, actually, it's online. Yeah. It's got a lot of really funny shit. Wait, Crack Magazine's online? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to tell you the future. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's good. It was like it had really good articles. They were pretty witty. Uh, like a kind of actually a smarter onion, if you can believe that. Like like a new version, or did you buy like an old retro one? No, it's it's online. It's this crack month, magazine's never gone away. It's online. Google crack dot com, and you'll get crack magazine. I was more of a of a mad magazine guy. I know there was always those two groups. Yeah, it? but it, but it's not like we had turf wars. I mean, I could still understand what was funny about cracked and that dopey blonde haired kid instead of Alfred E. Newman. Mm -hmm. I get it. I don't I I don't even know who what yeah I guess we there were turf wars I didn't hang out with anyone who read cracked Oh yeah I, we I, I thought they were sides. I thought they were the same thing I didn't know there was a difference I was kind of a community organizer in my name <laughs> I would I would hang out with both groups <laughs> Firecrackers and fist fights You you'd wear neutral colors <laughs> Absolutely I <laughs> Mad Magazine has a pretty shitty website if you were wondering I'm not. No. Yeah, I did. Well, once all the artists died, it turned out that was a big part of it. What was that one guy, Stratego, or what's his name? Stratego. Stratego? He was the artist that did all your cool Mad Magazine things, and he was like, when I first wanted to go in cartooning, I went, he's amazing. And then I sat doodling going, his shit's a lot better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first feeling, how's all the Lemonials feel now? Oh, I can't do it. I quit. I go, all right. Keep doing that till you end up in jail. After a half of attempt. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't think we'll settle the uh, the debate over Cracked or Mad Magazine. Oh, but it does look like, and we can talk about local Anchorage stuff, right? Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't know anything that happened uh, in your local politics. Because I, I was at the no, comedy store. Politics. We're talking about our oh. crime, which is part of our politics. Oh, okay. Uh, we made national news for a crime last week. Because we've been making the national news a lot. Newser? Yeah. Anchorage story. Anchorage story. Anchorage story. Woman gets attacked by bear. Bear comes back an hour later, buys her dinner. You know, <laughs> those kind of weird stories. We're like, why are we making national news for these? They'll All give right. a discover card to anyone these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, is a kid broke into a, and what was great was our local news calls it a, a local comic book store. They would not use the name. We all know what they're talking about, right? Greg, but, which, what is it? Bosco's, right? There you go. They, but, they wouldn't say what store, but they go, a kid dressed like a ninja broke in a side window, stole only a ninja sword in the back room, and left. And they said did minimal damage. Well, how do we know he wasn't just getting his sword back? Yeah. Dressed maybe, like a ninja. Maybe he left it. He lost it playing magic with a bunch of ten year olds. Yeah, and then he had Could ninja be. he had ninjaing to do and he no it was the local comic book store was closed. And then he that's not very ninja to go, go through a window no, like that. But to, you know what I will say? I will say this. Don't go through people's cars and stuff. If you want a ninja sword, go to the source. Yeah. <laughs> want tires, go to Johnson's tires. <laughs> You want stuff from Costco, go to Costco. Don't rob your neighbors and then go to Costco. And then go buy, yeah. Yeah, if you're gonna thief, thief all the way. Yeah. So, so that anyway, made that, that made national story. that made national news. Yeah. Well, they had the video of him dressed like a ninja sneaking around the store. And he comes oh, there was video footage. And get this, there was a uh, you know the alarm went off, but by the police time the police showed up, he somehow disappeared. That feels like a that feels like an inside marketing job. Yeah, like, really. Yeah, they, Except someone planned. took the fall. I mean, the Did ninja they arrest somebody? No, they don't know. Oh, They're perfect! Ninja. They rounded up all Great. the useful ninjas, but he's a ninja. He got away, of course. Yeah, he just like blended into the black walls, and then they came in and said, "Well, it, we're, we're going to put our best men on it." And then they left, and then he went out the back door. 
Come on, this they is this is Ninja One Hundred and One, guys. Well, now he's armed. Now he's armed <laughs> and dangerous. The police will have the best ninja in Anchorage contest. Everybody's thinking they'll just sit there looking at pictures, going, "You." <laughs> So the, he, there's a there's video of him like creeping around like like a cat like a yeah slow like crouched down like John Belushi to across honest, the yard. He's not real graceful. He wears a size six, I think. There's a couple of ninja robbery stories uh, going on in the world right now. So what happened to cat burglaring? That that was a thing. The tail. That not but oh it got in the way. <laughs> yeah, getting caught in the door. <laughs> <laughs> we have to rethink this outfit. <laughs> How about ninjas? Everyone likes ninjas. I, just I know. thought it was one of those bluff. But what's weird was even <laughs> the manager of the store goes, he did minimal damage, so like we're not that upset. <laughs> I'm like, oh good. Our walk up traffic. Is- doesn't bring a baseball bat to your store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then saying it's a local comic book store, and there's only one comic book store. It's really advertising Bosco's anyway, right? Yeah, but yeah, they refuse to give them the ad. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you don't advertise with us. Well, when they had like a 17-year-old us- using a trash compactor and got busted for it, they oh, definitely right. they definitely said their name <laughs> then. Yeah, they, they were, said they got yeah, they got cited for underage workers. I think the headlines were like <laughs> Bosco's comic shop uh underage workers and that was like the whole headline and then like it was four par- paragraphs in when they were like a 17 year old was using a trash compactor. Yeah. And they go, they, and the owners of the place said, we try to show kids a good work ethic. And, and then you know what was cool to comment? Like 20 people, because Brett's, uh, Becky's brother worked there for years, but he started out just as a little sales kid and, and worked his way up to manager of the store. And da, 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 da. anyway, now he's a teacher. Bad luck. But, uh, <laughs> lucky he didn't die in that trash compactor. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is, Everyone, all the comments were, I, they gave me a job when I was like 14 there. All, and three of them said I was shoplifting. They caught me and made me work it off. It, I, I was never into comic books as a, as a kid, but I, it would seem to me that like 13 to 16, that's like that kind of sweet spot where those are the guys you want to talk to about comic books. Those are the dudes who will tell you what the fu- where to find it or what issue. I mean, I know comic book men and that whole fucking thing on uh on uh cable but i mean i i trust i trust a young kid who follows it intently and not a creepy old dude who has a fucking you know a beard and uh and lives in the basement of his mom's house well bosco's has got a new location they went down the street greg and it's a beautiful new store yeah, and yeah. the thing is why don't they just find all their former employees and show where they are now because i know one's a uh <laughs> on the school board uh he uh Gr- brett's a teacher I mean, you go through and go, look, these are what happened when you hire kids young and teach them a work ethic. Yeah, yeah. Unlike that halfway house you're running. And what kind of message are you sending? You tell them, hey, listen, you uh, do what you love and you'll never work a day. You'll never feel like you, you've worked a day in your life. Oh, except uh, don't get a job at a comic book store where you, where you, <laughs> where you, you spend your days anyway. I mean, that, that you're right. I'll, I mean, where these people end up later, it's a good example, but still. I stand by it. Thirteen to sixteen, those guys—they know. They know the fucking comics. And wait, wait, do you think this is an inside job, by the way, with the ninja? Oh, yes. yeah. I think uh, yeah. he knew right sure. where it was. Yeah, that was the biggest problem. I mean, I mean, this kid walked into a completely darkened store. Going, he knew, he knew where all the lasers were, yeah. so he could avoid those. <laughs> well, he had that mist, <laughs> so he could yeah. he could skirt around them. But uh, he did find a ninja sword in the dark. So I'm pretty sure he kind of knew where he was going. I got a feeling if you go through your security film, picture the doughy-eyed kid who keeps staring at it for three weeks before this. <laughs> That's really cool. Can I look at it again? He's always he's always in the back by the dumpsters, like just working on his swordsmanship with a with a mop. <laughs> with a mop handle. That's a guy. Like Star Wars kid. <laughs> we used to fight with those. We'd go through like dentist offices and we'd find where they threw out the uh fluorescence. The tube. Fluorescent tube. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'd fight with those. And we'd hit those, and boom, that big cloud of dust. I guess that dust is like the most deadly thing on the planet. I think there's isn't that's like a there's a uh, that's a gas in there. That's uh, I mean those are yeah. under pressure. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed gas. to. Yeah, you probably. I would imagine they they do all that in China where they don't care about people's health. Well, 
I mean, nobody understands. Where do you think I'm throwing away at? Some fucking Fabergé egg? I mean, what are you talking about? I throw them in a dumpster, and, and obviously people throw shit in. They're throwing old tires in. They break. They float in the air. Next thing you know, everybody around that neighborhood's got a weird cough. <laughs> Oh, I'll look that up. I'll see if I can put that link on uh, on the page. That's a good one. It's Maybe one of those feel good. It's weird. It's a crime story and a feel good story. <laughs> and it does look like the guy they shot downtown is the serial killer. Do you see the picture of him next to the uh, serial killer? I, that is like that's like a picture from like the seventies, dude, with a Polaroid. No, that's, it, I know it could have been DB Cooper. Yeah, but, that's uh, exactly a, a drawing of DB Cooper looks about as uh, the resolution is about the same as the picture they had of a guy that they just shot. But the part. Well, what I do you want? The, you want the picture of him after they shot him? Well, no, I just figured there might be a a, a better picture. Is is that an old um, mug shot or something? No, it was a sketch. It's- it looks like a passport picture. No, it's a sketch. It's a hand sketch. All right. Just so, it was based on the description of the people who saw somebody near where the bodies were found. Just in case. Wait, just in wait, case. What, the, are we, what are we talking about? Hold on a second. Let me explain this. Just in case uh, we have some new listeners, uh, I'm in Arizona, <laughs> and uh, John and, and Matt Becker are both in different locations. None of us are looking at a computer screen uh, at the same image on a computer screen. The reason <laughs> the reason we're all talking about three different pictures of the same dude is because we've all looked at three different sources. <laughs> no, pull up the ADN. They got the pictures side by side. Also, if we have new listeners, uh, they should get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is only for our. This is only for the true near the wild fans. We've got no more room for the new people. All right, so I, uh, I I clicked on the picture. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. The uh, sketch in him. It's him. Yeah, I don't. And that's the gun that used to kill him. I don't know about that sketch, man. No, it's, that's. I never understand how people pick these people out. I that chin scared. is all wrong. First of all, the chin's wrong, but the nose is pretty good. He's got that one messed up. No, girl. but you know what it look is. At the nose. I know. I'm looking, John. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. They're side by side. That that to me, uh, one of those guys could ask me for something, and then the then the cops could show me the picture, the other picture, and I'd go, I'd never seen that guy before in my life. The eyebrow, well, eyebrows. Well, no, the eyebrows are all right. They're just. No, they're right. I mean, look how dark the eyebrows because they That's the one thing that people must have picked up. They go had really big eyebrows. And- the hairline's fucked. That's what's wrong. The hairline. It's the chin and the hairline. No, I, I'd say ever who, uh, whoever took two hours of night school to become a sketch artist uh, needs to go back because yeah, that's, oh. that's horrible. Yeah, Clear, I mean, clearly, a clearly a person like on the bike trail and stuff that saw somebody <laughs> and they only saw him for a minute. And this is the best we got. But it, it's I have to admit it pretty damn good. I don't Greg, know. I mean, I mean, being a sketch artist was not this guy's dream. OK, he, this is just what he fell into. The killer or the dr- the artist? No, the artist. I yeah, don't care about the the artists are like, what do you mean? Our our top five sketch artists are out of town. We need a sketch artist down here right now. And then they what? went they went down to the community college and no, they, wanted, they, they looked for someone it? with a sketch pad and charcoal under their fingernails and said, come down here. This is a this guy, police business. He wanted to be like he wanted to do the next, uh, you know, the next peanuts. He wanted to be <laughs> the next Charles Schultz. Yeah, but it didn't work out. And Clearly, so no. Ended up, no. He ended up drawing pictures of uh, of murderers, and he's it not really like a, putting it all well, in there. It looks like a photorealistic picture of Jughead, <laughs> without the cap with the points. <laughs> now, now, if you would ask this guy to do a Snoopy lying on his uh, doghouse, f- nailed it. I I could pick. Well, yeah, the yeah. guy usually does pet uh, pet pictures. <laughs> pet hey, portraits. Your cousin Carl still doodle. <laughs> Yeah, that's horrible, dude. Yeah. But anyway, they got it. It sounds like they got him, though. It, it really does. Well, well they, they definitely got him. They killed someone. You're right well, no, there. That gun, that, his gun killed yeah. five people. That's good. So, so, so when they were saying there was no serial killer. Here's what out. one of the reporters told me at my work today. He said they – so they stopped. The police were in that area because they were looking for somebody who bailed on a cab fare. Oh, a, then like, just, like a dine and dash on a cab? Yeah. At like around 4.30 in the morning, around 5th and C Street, and then they just came across this dude who ha- happened to have a loaded gun and got freaked out by the police, and they started a firefight. And, and just like it was by chance that they ran into this guy. So this guy might yeah, have been – this guy, for him. this guy was casing for another shooting, right? Yeah, sounds like – and it sounds like all the other uh, 
the five other homicides connected to him, they all happened at around, uh, you know, between two and five in the morning. Jesus. Wow, Pretty back to a cop. Pretty back in the day, cop. Becker, when they had the gambling houses and shit open late night, the after hours joints. I mean, that's when we were out on the streets. Yeah, that was when that was our run around time. Jesus. See? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See? No, but you'd be safe if you were in a, in a See, I'd be house. safe if I was in a gambling house, but wow. Yeah. Yeah, but so what's weird is originally the story read that they were re- responding to a burglar alarm that went off and they thought he was going to break in somewhere. And then later that story just goes away. And that was a skip cab fare is the only thing that got him yeah. out of the house. Yeah. But, uh, but that, but in the, in the, in the pursuit of this person who was, uh, skipped the cab fare, they found this guy or, or ran across this guy. And that's when the firefight, this wasn't the guy who skipped on the cab fare, right? No, it was yeah. somebody else. That guy's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> He's still out there stiffing cab drivers. Yeah. We'll get him someday. Maybe we need, uh, nobody, maybe we need a sketch completely... artist <laughs> of his shoes. Nobody's, <laughs> I guess nobody's like completely sure what happened yet because the APD over the last couple of years have become very secretive about what they're doing. They don't have uh, the scanner anymore. For, yeah, there's uh, no reports. Newsers don't have a scanner to listen to, and apparently they're uh, – in public information officer person is not uh, very good and t- t- just always says no comment. He's so. now the he's now the sketch artist. Yeah. He's got to do a gig. <laughs> I can't do both. Look, you're paying me the same. Yeah, I'm not double dipping here. So, John, how do you guys how do you guys find out? How do your news guys find out your beat reporters when when shit goes down? I have I have no idea. No, did you see how they do it? They actually will text the uh, the public gets it. APD will text yeah. the information and that that's all the media gets too. I think, I think they have, I mean, every media outlet has like a one 800 number that people can call in and say, Hey, there's something happening yeah. out on the street. I don't know how reliable that is. Um, but like, you know, I don't know. There was nothing about this story until, uh, almost like nine o'clock this morning. So I think the police, you know, when they kill somebody, they put out a press release. Well, yeah, that's, that's, I guess that's their attempt at uh, controlling the information, right? I like this too. The uh, uh, the police spokesman, somebody added. They said, "Who said it?" I want to say it wrong. Uh, Burkowski said, "Oh, and then Burkowski, our, our mayor, uh, he said, I think it's a vast oversimplification to think that the police should have compromised their investigation to simply inform the public about the course of their investigation." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't tell us anything. We're on a need-to-know basis. By the way, we're on a need-to-know why this guy got away with this as long. <laughs> or, or, or that there's shots fired downtown. I mean, the last we heard about it, like, <laughs> was he like, uh, to the public, don't worry, there's not a serial killer. Just stay off the trails at night. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> Yeah, they did. That's what they said. Just don't use the trails. Our entire network trails that we spent millions and billions of dollars on. Just stay off of them. No big deal. Nothing to worry but about. But there's no stay serial inside. killer. Just stay off the trails because uh, there's potholes. I don't. I don't understand. If they're telling you not to do it, and they're also saying, "But don't worry, there's no serial killer." <laughs> I mean, and you can so, you can connect those dots, right? Yeah. So <laughs> one of them was saying that uh, if you look back. Um, last time they were asking if the if the murders were connected, the uh, the officer they talked to said there. I can say unequivocally that we don't believe the six murders are all connected. <laughs> and and he was right because only five of the murders yeah, were connected. We're so. connected. Did he I buy guess. the gun legally? <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear about that. I know. <clears throat> Well, that's exciting for you guys to get in the national we can, national we press. Can walk on our trails again. Yeah. 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 Ninjas and serial killers. You guys yeah, are fucking. So anyway, you're on a, a roll. Deal. We got. Yeah, we got a lot of shit going on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the uh, the, the super moon. We had super clouds. <laughs> Were, you know, you always hear about the super bigger than normal cloud. You always hear about the super moon, but you never hear about the super clouds. But that's. Yeah. That's kind of like your super fireworks displays. 
in Anchorage. I was in my socks. And I was trying to find the moon. It was so cloudy. I was like, ah. So I opened our back door, as you know, and Cooper's out there. And he, I go, get in here. And uh, I went to step out to just see if I could see the moon. I stepped in a pile of dog shit in my socks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like going, this is why I'm not into stars. This is why you got to be careful looking up to the skies, Becker. Yeah. Look Nose down, down to the me. ground. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I I started to say before we got into this uh, on election day, I was at uh, the comedy store uh, watching the End of the World podcast with Doug Stanhope and Joe Rogan and a, a pantheon of fucking amazing comics. That I don't know if you guys heard it, but it's now up on uh, on Doug's website. Uh, it is it's fun to listen to again and again. That's how good it is. I've had it on loop. I went to the gym yesterday. I just listened to it. It's good. So yeah, uh, it really is. Yeah, and then uh, so funny. <clears throat> so that was that was pretty crazy. What just, was your favorite part? Uh, when when I almost well, I I, I was kind of I, I I fucked up. I was a little drunk. Um, oh. <laughs> but it is it was my favorite part when I went out front and this guy we knew from uh from the Vegas show, um, Alex, just Alex. And he goes, hey, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's Russell Simmons. I thought he said Russell Simmons, and I'm looking across the parking lot because I'm looking to see if there's any more comics that are going to come in. We're like in our th- th- three hours we've been through, and we got another hour to go. And I'm, I wonder if anyone's out there. And I see who clearly is Russell Peters. I know who that is, but I had been drinking for about 24 hours, and in my head, the the Simmons thing stuck. And then I, you know, dutifully go backstage to the to the main room, and I I say, hey, I uh, I, I don't know, D- Doug doesn't know this guy that I know of, but does anyone know Russell Simmons? He, he's out there. <laughs> and then um, someone just said, hey, Doug, call Russell Simmons up to the stage. And uh, yeah, and then it was a uh, yeah. I took, I took. What an I, honor! What an honor! The founder of Def Jam Records <laughs> here. Well, the thing is, is that he tonight. he's doing something on Comedy Central now. He has like a Russell Simmons comedy jam or whatever, right? So it they it just made started Def Jam again on HBO. But it made oh. sense to some degree. But just being fucking hammered and then this whole thing going on. And I did, I did say something to Russell Peters later. I apologize, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, and it turns out that was probably, kind of <laughs> probably better. Well, it was fun. It was probably it, better to have Russell Peters and Russell Simmons on stage. Well, he, we would have took either one. <laughs> it, just, it just, uh, yeah, it was one of those things. I thought that was funny. My, but my you know, favorite part was everybody was cruising along. The show was great. It was like everybody was jabbing, jabbing, and then they had the one girl, and then that's okay because uh, Joe Rogan, you know, they're bam, boom, boom, and then they put that. Who was the other one? Uh, what are you the talking one about? That got in a beef with uh, Sarah Bill Tiana. Burke. Yeah, that was so funny though. I go, uh, I go, and you wonder how Trump won. Everyone gets along. Everyone gets along. One chick came in, and all of a sudden, was like, "Fuck you." Well, she was, she was really beating a dead horse on a couple of issues, and and I, and I'm like, I'm backstage, like tittering around, just like you know, just like looking through the 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 cut in the curtain, just going, "This is fucking crazy." And at one point. He just goes. He goes. You're you're a lunatic. He called her like a Bill Burr called her a lunatic, and I just lost my shit. I thought this is fucking hilarious. She she was saying something about like, no, it is important who the first lady of the United States is, and like yeah. like He's everyone like, else is all like, that doesn't fuck. We don't vote for that person. Goes, no, it's important. And, and I like, love this that's, argument. They pick I some think... stupid charity, and then they fucking make you listen to it. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. And then she also she vote. <laughs> there was a vote on the ballot in California that uh, that all pornos, uh, the men uh, by law must wear condoms, and if they don't, there it's it's a it, it, you could sue them, and they'll they shame them by putting their name. They can broadcast their name and stuff, and it, and she voted yes on that. Person. And everyone yeah, I was wish like, I was "What there the for fuck?" That. I was so, I was so, I was sitting there yelling out shit that you think when they brought that up, I was going to be like, "Yeah, you're going to ruin the money shot. Who throws in full condom at somebody's face? That's gross. <laughs> it's assault, is what it is." Well, I thought she it's, was fucking. It's, it's called water. It's called water ballooning. Then. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought she was winding everyone up. I'm like, oh, this is good. She's controversial. We need, we need, I mean, we need a Trump supporter out there somewhere, right? I mean, it was all, you know, pretty, pretty liberal or at least, you know, progressive. And <laughs> yeah, she was doing it. She was fucking serious. <laughs> but I loved it. Everybody sat in awe watching the numbers come in. They're going, are you serious? Yeah. It was are good. you serious? Yeah. There's also, uh, I'll put a link to, there's a YouTube clip that went up to uh, Rogan posted and uh, I think he had on Vimeo too, but it was great. And you know, it wasn't, it, it, it kind of, it was kind of very chaotic backstage, especially when Manson was there and, and he wouldn't come out and stuff. And it was, it was, there was a, there was a real fucking thing of like, is this happening? And it's like some weird shit. And the place was sold out. And like four hours later, I go to the back of the room. It's still packed all the way to the back. No one left for four hours. So that was, uh, that was, that was great. It was fun. And, and, uh, you know, Joe, Joe really fucking, uh, put a lot of shit together to get to get it on streaming live and because it was live video as well as uh audio yeah yeah, yeah so, we watched the whole thing perfectly yeah it was good it was good so yeah it was a lot of fun and that's that's what i did when uh our our <laughs> the uh, blossoming of uh trump's new america happened yeah but it was good you know what it was it was an, and, and this is why you got to do it again is it was an alternative to listen to the fucking repeating news yeah yeah I mean, they just went over everything. And it was so funny. It was almost like watching Joe Buck with the Cubs. He was still <laughs> talking. The news media was still talking shit about Trump when he clearly looks like he's going to win. Yeah. And then they're still talking shit. And yeah. I go, you know what? Say whatever you want. But you missed. And they go, how did the pollsters get it wrong? Well, you got it wrong, too. Yeah, yeah. Well. Only because they got all their information from the pollsters. No, but they yeah, have their own polls. Who <laughs> went on Facebook to see who was popular. Well, I, yeah, it is interesting. It, it's kind of like Doug's old joke of like getting bad news from a celebrity. <laughs> like you get, yeah, you're she's gonna break up with you, but to deliver the news is Carmen Electra. I mean, that was really that's kind <laughs> yeah, of what really listening was. listening to Bill Burr and Rogan and Kreischer and Doug and everyone else who was on the on the the dais up there talk about you know to weave in the election results was uh that that was kind of a nice way to 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 get the bad news or the good news i don't fucking know so but they did pass uh they passed uh, recreational weed in uh, california wow so all the people who currently smoke weed are going to continue yeah <laughs> good for that not one new yeah. smoker <laughs> huge breakthrough <laughs> well you're going to lose a lot of them when they get rid of the mexican yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> That, actually, you're gonna go down in sales. Did anything uh, happen? Did anything happen in Anchorage that uh, makes a fucking difference with the elections? Uh, uh, no. Well, our House uh, Democratic. Yeah, that fucking that's First, weird. Oh yeah. In 12 years or 14 years? How'd that happen? Uh, well, they didn't do anything for three special sessions, and we have no budget. So that's all it took. Yeah, really. You, you, yeah, you guys are still trying to figure out the money thing. But, but House of Representatives still Don Young forever. Jesus, <laughs> no. he is now on his like 800th term as our representative. Yeah, yeah, and uh, really has no interest in ever doing anything for Alaska again. Yep. <laughs> hey, uh, Kowski, it, I also won in a in a landslide. Is Palin like up for something in the Trump regime? Yeah, the Secretary of the Interior. Are you fucking so serious? I'm serious, and I swear to God, bear rugs are going to be worth nothing soon. She knows it means, but I'm, she she knows it doesn't mean interior decorating. She's not decorating the inside of the, of the White exactly House. What it means. <laughs> I'm 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 fairly sure she's the one who started that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, think I don't think I don't John, think anybody else said that. No, John, dude, she was one of the first that uh, that that yeah, that that, you, that threw in for Trump. I mean, what what's what's to lose, right? But even 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 Trump, after having her like on stage at one event, was like, okay, that's it. Oh yeah, she <laughs> she was only on for like one or two press conferences. He wants to give her a job so she stays out of his office. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, if she, where's if the interior really, office? All right, way at the end. Perfect. If she really wants the job, she should probably just uh, start an anti-Semitic blog. That's apparently the fast track. Yeah, that'll I put like her right in. Fact, He's such an outsider. He doesn't even understand how politics work. That's what <laughs> no, that's it. And no one gets that. He goes, I'm going to point all my kids to cabinet position. And then they came out and said, uh, you can't do that. I love that then, uh, that his son-in-law uh, 
Sherrard or whatever his name is. He's he's like one of the guys that is they're trying to get a secure clearance for and everything. And when they were at the White House, uh, he asked one of uh, Obama's staffers about the transition and, and getting all the people on Trump's staff. He asked a Obama staffer, like, how many of uh, – like, I know we're going to transition – to Trump and we're going to hire all these people. How many of your people currently will transition over to the Trump staff? <laughs> and the Obama staff was like, zero, dude. <laughs> it's like, have you ever seen the West Wing? <laughs> it, no, I know. That's it. He doesn't how do you frame it, dude? TV references. <laughs> he hasn't been watching Veep. I know. They, oh, God. God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's- John, NPR is going to be great again. Uh, I know it already. It already is. They were just. They just had some people uh, talking about how uh, how Trump refuses to read long anything longer than a page. Yeah. But oh, how he how he talks about how he doesn't he doesn't read long reports. He just trusts his uh, his instincts. I can't wait for his first State of the Union. That thing's like two hours long. No. Oh, he can talk. He can, like, he can let's, talk. Let's, he can talk, but I, I think he's going to keep it under, under 30. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut to the chase, guys. What are we doing here? Hey, anybody got that uh, uh, that new program where we can type in text and it talks like Trump? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do him in a silhouette. Oh, fuck. Are they going to have to update the Hall of the Presidents at Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> It's it is more like a haunted house now where you walk through. And, and, and then, They're gonna put him in and, the haunted mansion. Look, we said we'll you, put you in the you park. You've reached. You think you've reached the end, and then like right before you you like leave, Trump grabs your pussy. <laughs> no, but the best part He's is you got the end. you got an all Hispanic cleaning staff that's gonna have to clean him every day. <laughs> that's like, he already okay, he already stop, has that in real life. Miguel, stop putting the Hitler mustache on Trump. <laughs> We have cameras. I saw you do it again today. <laughs> yeah, all those things. I mean, you have to, all the way down the line. He, he's he's going to be that, that. He's the guy. He's going to be the face for the, until he quits. He's going to be the face of all this shit. And on your local news, how did uh, Bisbee take it? Uh, David Smith's our mayor, I think. Tracy, did he mm-hmm. Smith win? Yeah, David Smith. So that's what we were going for. Other than yeah, that, I don't. Uh, uh, oh, how Jason Lindstrom. Doing, how's J- Gretchen doing with their Hillary car? Is it still running? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's on eBay Motors. <laughs> yeah, she w- she was actually in, I think, New York during the election. Yeah. Or something like that. I would yeah. like to be, that's equivalent to being in uh, in Dallas when Kennedy got shot. <laughs> really? <laughs> I think so. Your candidate goes down and he's not coming back up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she's done, right? Yeah, they. He's so old. She was already going to be one of the oldest people ever. Yeah. Oh well. Well, I'm worried she's going to lose her Obamacare now. I don't know. I don't know, dude. No, but she's having so many health care problems. <laughs> I don't think anyone's worried about Hillary. No. No, just... it's a horrible mess, and, and we'll see. It'll all work out. Yeah. I love it, it, with, with it never. It... Like I'm the most. I'm the most negative person in the world because I'm right a lot, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are going, he'll probably be all right, right? I go, oh, sure. Your cousin. Yeah, he's going to get you. Yeah, he's going to fucking handle your finances. He's great. Yeah, on the on the bright side, people will probably be drinking more, Becker. Yeah, I mean, after they lose their homes. And yeah. yeah. I mean, sure. mankind has survived the plague. Sure. Uh, Genghis Khan. It's a good uh, reference. Way, yeah. Like, way worse things. So, Not actually yet. We don't know that, John. We don't know if we survived we're, Genghis Khan. No, no we we know we, we survived those things. What he's saying is, is what? Yeah, those were nothing compared to this. <laughs> yeah, I say we nuke Canada. I mean, that could happen. <laughs> oh God! Are they are they too close? Can we nuke them? Yeah, I think he'll be the first president. Not is he a big drinker? He Trump doesn't drink. Doesn't at all. drink? No, doesn't drink never at touched all? a drop. That's, that's the scariest part. Although he had neither Trump- did Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Are are we doing? We're gonna do a pros and cons. We're gonna see. <laughs> hey, uh, so uh, I'm glad we don't talk about politics. Uh, yeah, I do have to mention that uh, Doug's new CD, well, the 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 special No Place Like Home that was on uh, CISO, 
uh, November 20th. It's available on CD, and I think you can order it in advance right now on Amazon, but I'll have a page up um, for sales on Doug's site soon. So that's No Place Like Home, available on CD, November 20th. You know what you could do? You could take the CD and on the back of it, make it a 33 record with just one joke. <laughs> what? Yeah, you could make the back of it so you put it on a record player and it'd play. That'd be cool. Thanks for the reminder because I, now I, I'm reminded that I need to go cancel my CISO subscription now that I've watched the special. Yeah, yeah. That was that yeah. was free. It was good though. Yeah. It was great. It was it's a great $3. special. It's $3.99 a month. It's $3.99 C- a month. CISO's got some stuff on there. I watched some of it. Yeah, we've talked about it. Harmontown. I loved it. I've seen a bunch of uh, – I've just – I've. I've tittered around a little bit here and there on but uh just haven't spent that much time on online watching TV lately. Harmon Quest, that's what it is. Harmon Quest. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I was like the loudest whisper ever. What happened in there? Oh, that was uh Tracy oh. in the background. <laughs> we're we're down at uh we're, you know everyone knows Bingo had kind of an, an incident. She's still kind of in a coma. And uh we're da- we're at Tucson hanging out with Doug. Uh, we're, we're part of Doug's transition team, uh, moving him I, into an Airbnb tomorrow. So Kind of in a coma is a lot better than being in a coma, though, so that's progress. Well, see, I don't know what it's called. I mean, now they're, they're on total lockdown, but I, uh, uh, she kind of wakes up, says something, and then kind of goes back out of it. So uh, mm-hmm. I don't ask too many questions. So just trying to be be supportive. Have you done that thing where you throw a tennis ball, see if she catches it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They taught. They told us to quit throwing tennis balls at her. <laughs> she only got one out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. If anyone, if anyone wants to send anything to Bingo, don't it, to the to the hospital. You, it's it's ICU. Nothing can nothing can get to her anyway. So, and then we just we just have a bunch of stuff to. I got a guy gonna around. drop off an ninja sword. <laughs> Greg, I want. <laughs> I want my I want my swim shorts back. So while she's out, sneak those sneak those back to me. Yeah, you might get them. All right. No, I'm I'm gonna go rifling through her shit and go. Uh, yeah, John. John had second thoughts about these uh, these uh, swim trunks. <laughs> I don't know if she has a will, but maybe you could just add add that. Well, we don't need to, we don't need them. There's no need to talk about a will. She's still doing fine. All right. All right. I know you really want those shorts, but John, come on. You gave them to her. Have you seen those big stuffed uh, bears at like Costco and stuff? The huge ones? They're yeah, they're cartoony bears. Yeah, yeah. Send one of those. I no, I want to get one of those and get in it. <laughs> I make it into a, a costume <laughs> and just lay it down because everyone's seen them and be like, "Oh, look at the big bear!" Yeah, and yeah. You have to go touch it and just reach up and grab them. Yeah, that'd be funny as fuck. That'd put me in a coma. Just lay there at Costco, scaring the shit out of people. Yeah, probably sell a lot of them. All the free cheesecake I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could you could roll around that place at night. They wouldn't even know it was you. Oh, just lay there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're up. So, hey, hey, anyone got any plans for uh, Thanksgiving that are worth mentioning? Other than, uh, other than uh, just making a turkey. We cooked a turkey Thanksgiving or no, election night. Oh yeah. So we did that, and it was fantastic. And then Becky made the most amazing turkey soup yesterday. Why did you fantastic. wait? Why did you do that during election night? Uh, we our joke was that we we're going to cook a turkey, and that way we we're going to put them because I had a mask for Hillary and a mask for Trump. Uh-huh. And we we're going to stick it on it in case then, in case you don't make it to Thanksgiving because of the end of the world. I get it. Yeah, but it was such a weird thing, and then you went, "Wow, this is a real beating, and this is weird, and people are very because that's the thing in the bar. I just couldn't. Nobody could talk about politics anymore. I I usually will let them, but this one was so divisive, and that's how he won. Is basically everyone would whisper and go, "I voted for Trump." I go, "I get it. You did. You all did." Yeah, <laughs> and your bar is tough because in the birdhouse, yeah. everyone has to listen to what anyone else is saying. There's just not. There's no way to get around it, especially you because you're in the middle of it. Yeah, and I have to be the ringleader. So it was real tricky to get people through it. And some people, you know, they're very emotional. They still are. I mean, I was doing the joke. I'm so, I wanted Hillary to win, and, and all the girls would be like, yeah. I go, because she's a woman. She make half as much as a man. It's brilliant. <laughs> and, uh, but then when it Trump won, I go, oh, that's great now, because uh, we'll build that wall. And I got a house in Arizona. So full employment. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. So they, <laughs> they didn't understand it. They were like, what? I don't understand. And I go, I get it. I'm just trying to make light of the fact that we're 
might be fucked, but thank God we're in Alaska. Yeah. Nobody even knows we're up here. Doesn't it's matter. True. We don't have winter yet either. Wait, no winter. Wait, no. wait. Who got who? Who won the uh, the snowfall? Uh, oh, uh, what was the somebody, date? Somebody. Yeah, I have them. I gotta say it because it's here. They pull up in Twitter. And the winner, and the winner of this year's snowfall contest. Who? Uh, my friend's making fresh uh, jerky. I was gonna send him old jerky, and then I go, <laughs> "You want to just wait and get fresh jerky?" And he goes, "Yes." But isn't the point of jerky that you can eat it when it's really old? All jerky is old. Will Ferguson, I believe it's pronounced Will Ferguson. Will Ferguson has just won some vintage jerky. Why? Wait, hold on a second. Who won the uh, the snowfall thing? Not us. Oh, not Will Ferguson. Oh, Will Ferguson I was, won. I don't know. Between us, I I couldn't remember. Uh, I, was, I know I, I missed I was, it by seven days. I was closest without going over. What was the date? The first, the first recorded actual snowfall by the uh, Anchorage Daily News that, or Dispatch News. Yeah. Oh God! Now we gotta look it up. I think I said the seventh. Then it was the fourteenth. Yeah. October seventh. Ooh, yeah. October twenty yeah. first. Wasn't it? What was my date? Didn't I pick the twentieth? Boy, we're really bad at running these contests, guys. <laughs> I know, no, but <laughs> but October twenty first was the date. Okay, I'll write that down. I'll I'll figure it out. I think I remember seeing one of you guys tweet that. Yeah, I just knew. No, I didn't think. I I didn't. I guess I didn't really have you on because I know you want the latest, Greg, and you were probably yeah. Yeah, I got it, and I got it in the show notes though. I'll figure I thought it I out. I went the latest. I went like November. I think I said like November third or something. I was, yeah, I think you were, and and that because I was in the middle. Becker was early. I was in the middle, and then you went late. Okay, I'll figure it out. All right, John. So you get uh, yeah, just stop by the birdhouse and you get your prize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is it jerky? My, technically, <laughs> <laughs> it comes from jerky. All right, you've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker, sitting in a bus in Anchorage, Alaska. I'm John Norris, sitting in a different <laughs> bus in a different part. We need to get multiple buses, uh, also in Alaska. It's a bus of Palooza. And I'm Greg Shaley in uh, Tucson. Arizona, making it work. Is there a bar there? Oh, there's a bar. There's a bar. There's a bar in our room. There's a bar in, our, in the room next to me. And then, if we really want to spend money, we go downstairs. And you do want to spend money? Oh no. So what you do? It always bring a bar, but go downstairs to be social, <laughs> and then make more drinks upstairs, and then keep going down to the bar. You got to get a jacket bladder. One yep. of those sports water bottles that foldable, and you just put it in your coat. And you just keep bad and vodka. Yeah, we did a podcast last night on the patio with uh, we we had our our own little portable bar out there as well. But we went in and bought one drink each, and then sat out of the bar, or sat out at the uh, patio and uh, made our drinks. Perfectly legal, right? That works for me. All right, guys. Oh, did Arizona pass the weed? No, they did not. They did not. <laughs> Damn it! No. Damn you. I I don't even have an right. opinion on that. It, it's not like weed is is a uh, no one can find it around here. It's crazy. No, I know. That's my joke. Is that when they don't pass it, they still have it. <laughs> I I refuse to smoke weed until every state legalizes it. Yes, till every same sex couple can buy it legally in their state. Also, until I like smoking weed, which is probably going to be a while. <laughs> that's that's the bigger issue. <laughs> Later, guys. Bye. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus, engineered by me, Craig Shaley.
Not my podcast. <laughs> <laughs>